All right, welcome to day two. Now we're going to get detailed graphs of the polynomials. All right, so vocabulary polynomial graph. We've used the word of maximum and minimum before with parabolas. So let me just go to, real quickly, you don't have to even write this down, but we've graphed parabolas like so and said that this point right here, the vertex, is a maximum. And we've graphed parabolas like this and said this point right here was a vertex and it's a minimum. Okay, that concept is still going to come in, but notice now we're doing cubics. All right, so there's, you know, if you kind of cut it off here, don't draw that, there's a parabola. If you cut it off here, there's a parabola. So we're basically just drawing a different item, a cubic. Now, the local max is the highest point in a certain section of the graph. So right here, that point right there, now it, it looks you know close to negative one, one, two, three, all right? It's a little bit like more like negative 1.1, 1.2. It looks like it might hit three, but that right there is the local max. This point right here, which looks like one, a little past one, comma three, Whoops, we have a typo here. This should be the local min, minimum. It's the lowest point in each section of the graph. Okay, so the local minimum is right here. So, we also have x-intercepts, roots, and zeros, which we've talked about before. Right there, right there, and right there where they cross the x-axis, where they hit on the x-axis. So it looks like negative two, zero, and positive two. This one, again, is approximately negative one, three, and this min is approximately one comma three. That little squiggly mark means approximately, all right? So determine the number of real zeros, count the x-intercepts. So that would be, whoops, number of real zeros is three. All right, let's talk about the shape of the polynomial. Okay, there are two components of a polynomial that determine the shape, the degree and the LC. We talked about this before, remember LC is the lead or leading coefficient. It's the number in front of the highest degree x. All right? There are two characteristics of the function that directly determine the shape of the graph of the polynomial. So example, what is the degree and LC of the standard form polynomial? So notice it's already in standard form, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All right? That means this is what we're looking at. So the lead coefficient is negative 12 and the degree is the exponent 4. Shape of the graph. If the degree is even like the one we just had, the arrows point in the same direction. Okay? So if you think about it, think about a parabola. A parabola is a quadratic, right? And so we would have something like that or something like that, right? Well, when we get up to a four, like we just saw on the previous page, it's going to be like a W or an M. If it's odd, arrows are pointing in opposite directions. So think about a linear equation. A linear equation is X to the one, right? We would have this or that, positive and negative. Cubic, which is three. Positive and negative, all right? And five and seven, same thing. It just gets a little more complicated, but that's the general shape of it. Now, if the LC, the lead coefficient, is positive, the direction is up. So again, our happy parabola, our W, 
If the LC is negative, the direction is down. Our sad parabola, our frown, our M. All right, possible shades of the graph. Okay, what we, I just did. So if it's even and lead coefficient is positive, we're looking at a happy parabola or maybe a W. If it's even and it's negative, that means it's a sad parabola, a frown, or an M. If the degree is odd, then we're looking at, you know, linear, positive, okay? Or we're looking at a cubic that goes this way. And if it's negative, we have a linear this way or a cubic that looks like this. End behavior. In behavior is the direction the y values are approaching as x goes to infinity and negative infinity. All right. So, in other words, as we're going left and as we're going right, it's both going up. So, as we go left, it's going up towards positive infinity. As we go right, it's going up towards positive infinity. As is a W, you know this is an even positive. Okay? Over here, notice that we have one going down and one going up. That means it's odd. Okay? Now, think about it. We talked about how this is a positive cubic, okay? So that means since it's going up this way and down that way, this is a positive also. Here's a quick way, pull out your calculator and just real quickly go to y equals, this is a quick little test, and put x to the three. It doesn't even have to be the same degree, but this is a positive, right? And you can see which way it's going which means it's going down to the left, up to the right, the same as the one in our drawing here. You know, if you wanted to see it, you could put in a negative here and see what happens. And that's going the opposite direction. So, since this is going the same direction, we know it's positive. Number of real zeros, okay, how many times does it hit the x-axis? One, two, three, four, five. Five real zeros. That means if when we break this down, you know, there could be five binomials or, you know, five, there's five factors. Now, as it's going left, right, I shouldn't say right, correct, as it's going left, it is going down towards negative infinity. That's one of my worst infinities ever. And as it's going right, it's going up towards positive infinity. All right, construct a detailed graph of this one. Again, let the calculator do the heavy lifting. Okay, come over here. Clear it out. Put in x to the third power. Arrow down. Plus 2x squared. Plus 1. All right. There, we'll come back to that. So, the degree is 3. The lead coefficient is 1. Obviously, 3 is an odd number. Right? So, let's go to this now. Go to our table. On our calculator. And get some points. So, I'm, the best I can do is negative 3, negative 8. Negative 3, negative 8, which is right here, unfortunately, under the watermark. All right. Negative 2, 1. Negative 1, 2. Negative 
0, 1, and 1, 4. That's all I can do because then it's like 2, 17. That's off the chart. That's all I can do. So I do my best to kind of do... Wow, that just took a little slip there. Sorry. There is my horrible graph of my cubic. All right. Now, number of real zeros. Where is it hitting zero? Okay. We don't see it on here on the calculator. So it's in between. It's probably like negative two point something. All right. But it's only hitting x -axis, the x axis once. Right here. Now, local maximum, the highest point in that little dip there, or not dip, the little climb, the hill, is negative 1, 2. The local minimum, the dip in the valley, is 0, 1. End behavior, as it's going left, it's going down. As it's going left, it's going down to negative infinity. As it's going right towards positive infinity, it's going up towards positive infinity. Okay? Now, here it shows you we had actual maximum minimums. It was easy. But let's see how to do it in case it wasn't right on the dot. Okay? So press Y equals, put it in, which we did. Press calculate. So the calculator is right here in blue, second trace. So we're going to hit second trace. Press 3 to find the minimum. So we hit 3. Now, it says use the left right arrows to move the cursor to the left of the minimum or maximum, then press enter. Then move it to the right, press enter, and hit enter again. So we're trying to find... We hit number three, the minimum. So that's right here. So see how it's kind of where we think it is? There's a little black blinking light. So we just go left of it a little bit, somewhere on this you know, decline, and hit enter. And now we're going to travel down the valley, back up a little bit, anywhere around here. doesn't matter where. Hit enter, enter. Now, when you see this, this tiny number to, to negative six, that's effectively zero. Okay, so that's zero, one, which is what we put. All right. Then we go again, we're going to calculate. And this time we're going to do maximum. So here's our maximum here. So we're going to go to the left of the hill. We're going to go over the hill, somewhere to the left, anywhere down here, you know, hit enter. Then we're going to go right and we're going to climb over the hill. And somewhere in this decline, Hit enter and enter. So now look, on the previous one, that number was effectively zero. But notice here, it, our maximum is wrong based on the table. So we can't just use the table. I want to show you this. It, you know, we see one, two, and it looks like it's the highest point, but it actually is not quite there. It's actually negative one and a third, 2.2. So Again, let the calculator do the heavy lifting. It's really close to this, but it's actually negative 1.3 repeating 2.2. All right? So we can't just trust our eyes. We have to use the calculator to help us find the exact one. Now, remember, on this one, the minimum, it was effectively zero because it was like 0. 0.00000 something. So we would just put zero in that case. All right, let's do this again. So the degree is 4. The lead coefficient is negative 2. 4 is an even number. Now, since it is a negative, that means we're going to be looking at an M shape. All right? So let's go back to our calculator. Go to Y equals. Clear it out. Remember, use this gray negative key down here. 2X to the power of 4. Come down plus 4x squared, plus 1. Let's hit graph. Now, 
Notice, even though it's an M, it only hits the X axis once and twice. Okay, there's only two real zeros. All right, so let's get some points here and graph this. Obviously, we can only start here at negative 1, 3. And 0, 1, and 1, 3. And that's kind of it, right? Negative two, negative 15 and 215. So we could kind of say, you know, there's 10. 15 is going to be down here somewhere off the chart. Something like that. Okay, really thin. Remember that 2 makes it thinner, right? Now, it looks like our maximums are around negative 1, 2, and 1, 2. But let's go ahead and use the calculator to verify it. So we pull this up. We hit second calculate. We do the, min the maximum first. Let's go to the maximum first, 4, right? And we're just going to go to the left side. That's fine. It jumped. It sometimes jumps like that real quick. So we do that. We're going to come back over and just come slightly over the hump, somewhere in that decline. Enter, enter. And it is negative 1, 3. I think I said 2 before. Sorry. It is negative 1, 3. Most likely it's going to be positive 1, 3, but let's just check. So it's good practice. 4. We're going to come to the left side of that hill. That's good enough. Climb over the hill. Again, see how it jumps? Enter, enter. Now, 0 0.9999, we're just going to put 1, 3. All right? Minimum. Calculator. Second trace. We're doing minimum this time. It looks like 0, 1. So we're going to go to the left side of it. Hit enter. We're going to go down and back up a little bit. Hit enter twice. Again, that 7.7 .7 to the negative 7 is effectively 0. All right. Now, in behavior, they're both going towards negative infinity. This is kind of obvious. And that's it.